Hi guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World on Medium, on YouTube, and uh, perhaps somewhere else on the internet soon. So uh, this is another one of my screencasts. For this today's video, I am using um, I'm using my new USB lapel microphone. So hopefully there's a little bit less of that nasally dynamic going on that I had with the uh, my Logitech uh, my Logitech headset. Um, I'm just mentioning that for my own um, for my own records really because. Uh, I'm trying to listen back to my videos to assess uh, what sounds good and what sounds less good and uh, <laughs> constantly building up my uh, collection of uh, microphones as well. So basically Clenty is a sales enablement platform slash a, uh, it's, I mean, that's what they call themselves. The, the, the real truth of the matter is that it's a cold email marketing platform slash marketing, email marketing automation tool, various descriptions you can use. The main point is that it's not a CRM. It's not a customer relationship management system. Um, it does integrate with a number of CRMs and you can use CRM in conjunction with a tool like Clenty by automatically creating an integration uh, and automatically piping in leads from the CRM into Clenty that can be done. Or you can just use Clenty in a kind of old school way and I'm going to show you that way. It's basically just piping in CSV files, comma separated value, the kind of very, very crude spreadsheet format uh, that you can pipe out of Excel or whatever you're using for, for spreadsheets. Um, there's a number of tools like Clenty on the market. It's not the only tool of its kind. There is, for example, Woodpecker is a very well-known tool. Uh, there's a number of other tools in the space uh, that I did look at. I looked at about 10 actually, um, because I was looking for a tool to do uh, basically low volume outreach to agencies that I might be in, that I was interested in. Um, now I'm gonna kind of talk a lot about judiciousness and you don't want to send too many emails for Many, many reasons, um, you know, one of which is your email reputation would be greatly impaired if your emails are marked as spam. Uh, so try to keep your emails relevant, include an opt-out link uh, to be compliant with GDPR and just use it. You know, I do think that cold email marketing has a place. Uh, every time, um, you know, there's a Facebook group that, that, uh, that basically recommends LOIs, uh, letters, of, letters of interest, expressions of interest. And it's kind of the same thing, really. So I just think so long as your targets are people you genuinely think would be a good fit for you. And uh, I'm going to find a couple of leads like that uh, here in this video. Um, keep the volume low. Your email reputation will be fine. Plenty anyway has a limit of 700 emails uh, per day. Now you can add on, add on email addresses in order to increase that. So if you add on two, it'll raise that to 2100. Uh, but those that's a really, really big email volume that would be a uh, place you place your uh, sending sending domain in jeopardy uh, if you did that too consistently. So um, I'm going to just do set up a quick demo account here and I'm going to skip through some parts of this, the boring stuff like setting up my SMTP server. Um, ah, no, I just set up a new, I just set up a new, let's use my new domain. So let's just set up uh, demos at... Uh, Daniel Rosell dot tech. Now you can't use a Gmail with Clenty. It has to be a. Um, it has to be a. Uh, you know some some other. It can't end in Gmail. I don't think it can end in Hotmail or in Yahoo. It needs to be a, a company domain, basically uh, some URL that is not you know managed like that. Um, so this is the home screen after you sign up for Clenty, and I'm just going to populate a few details here. I'm going to call this. Daniel Rosa events. Now I actually have a real paid account on Clenty, on Clenty so I'm just intentionally feeding it uh, junk details here. Uh, one, 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 one. Um, this is just a fake phone number. Um, now here's, here is uh, what I was saying about CRMs. You can choose to connect it with Salesforce. If I said it doesn't include Salesforce, I retract that I was wrong. Zoho, Fresh Sales, HubSpot, Pipedrive, and Salesforce. So you have five different CRMs that you can uh, uh, integrate with Clenty and pipe on those leads. Um, I'm just going to use, as I said, manually in order to demonstrate this. Now, when you're connecting your sending email, you have a few options. You can, as I said, it's kind of a strange and incongruous reality in that you can sign up with a Gmail, then it says connect your Gmail. Um, I, I, it's pre-populated for G Suite. Um, uh, which are fine to use with Clenty. So if you just bear with me for one second, I'm going to do the uh, SMTP option over here and uh, set this up. Now, in order to do that, I'm, do I'm just gonna skip ahead through this, but basically you want to, uh, you know, just put in your username, password. Uh, if you're using SSL as opposed to TSL, click that box and uh, 
your host name and your port there as well. Uh, you know, typically port 465 for an SMTP server and port 587 for, uh, for SMTP over TLS authentication. Um, and you can also give it your, uh, your IMAP. In fact, you have to give it your IMAP, but notice something. There is an option to use a separate credential. So uh, you're able to basically say, pull, pull in emails from this address and send out emails from another address. Uh, so as I said, give me two, I'm just gonna pause the video for a minute while I just configure my SMTP server. Okay, so we've just uh, connected a uh, demonstration email. Um, I actually ended up creating on my own domain and that this is connected via just manual, manually entering the SMTP uh, credentials. Um, so basically the first thing you'll see is you have your email account here. Now you wanna create a display name for yourself. You can add a signature here and this is going to apply um, irrespective of, you know, of what cadence you're sending. So I'm just gonna say, Daniel Rosso signature, um, and you can just pull in a little email signature for yourself. You can try to, uh, you can actually put in HTML source code directly here. So if you have a nicely formatted uh, signature, you can uh, you can add that as well. Um, so I'm just gonna put in some of this. Oops. Just getting a message from them too. So let's just put in a uh, an email signature. You can copy that email address into just HTML. This is just for demonstration purposes. I'm putting in just an email signature there below the uh, below my line. And we just put a. And we can see it's just created a line, my name and just my, my face, my headshot there as well. So I'm just gonna click on save and that is that will be the default email signature that's gonna be applied across all the cadences and email campaigns. Now you can configure a email interval, which is as it says, the average interval between emails. So if, if you're worried about being throttled by your SMTP server, um, then you can set it in seconds for, you can go for random, random interval or you can go up to 300 seconds and from 30 seconds. So I'm gonna go 30 seconds and that means, as you can see, the daily limit here is set to 700. You can't go above that. It will just, it, you can, but it won't apply, but you can set yourself a lower limit. So I'm just gonna leave that unchanged at 700. So I've given my, uh, I've given my email account a name. Uh, I've added a signature. I've set the email interval in it and you can also configure a CRM BCC address. Now this is very useful. Um, uh, you know, for example, if you're trying to uh, just keep tabs. Now, one way, kind of a, a dirty workaround you can do is to add your own email address to your various contact lists just to check the first and have that as the first email in sequence to make sure stuff is sending correctly. Another thing you can do is BCC. Just be aware that every BCC email counts towards your daily, uh, your daily allotment uh, of 700. So 700, if you're using a BCC address, is actually only 350 unique contacts. You can change the unsubscribe and you can use the link tracking. You can also do custom link tracking if you want to. You need to create a CNAME record. So um, the, uh, the follow link on those, uh, on, those, uh, on those tracking pixels will be to your domain. Um, so when a user clicks on an email in your link in your email, it'll automatically, you'll be able to actually track that. And it'll say, I have mine configured as tracking.dsrghostwriting.com. It just looks a bit prettier as well if the recipient is looking at the actual links, the actual hyperlinks. Um, there's a few other settings here. I'm not gonna go through all of them. Um, you can have, you, you do have the setting if you're, if the same, um, if the same prospects is, is being applied to two lists. Now it has some nice overwrite features that you'll not be able to if you've removed a prospect from this, from this system by clicking on subscribe. You can also do that yourself. Um, even if they're in another list or in a future list, if you do a future import, um, that it'll not allow, it, you won't be able to send to them. Now this has got a little nice blocking thing. Again, you can uh, choose to pause your emails on specific national holidays like US holidays really, like Labor Day, Memorial Day, uh, etc. So that's just so, and you can configure your own custom ones uh, if you're not based in the US or you're actually taking some holiday yourself. 
So that's really it in terms of the uh, configuring the um, you know the backend. Um, you are able to connect Slack, uh, Calendly via API, um, and you can also you can also connect with other uh, webhooks as well. Uh, so and Zapier. So basically, do, these are the integrations that you can do uh, that are not CRMs. Um, the uh, Google Sheets is kind of useful because you you can add your database as a Google Sheet and have that automatically pipe in uh, to the cadences. So that one's handy. Um, I haven't used Slack. I haven't used Calendly, even though I do use Calendly myself. Um, now, as I said, in terms of the CRMs, you have at the start of the video, you have this choice of five different providers. You have a little billing management uh, area here. Um, I'm on, there's a 14 day free trial and you get 200 emails on that. Um, and then basically in terms of the Clenty, Clenty plans, you have uh, Tall, Grand and Venti. And you also have, as I say, you can purchase additional email, uh, email add-ons, and those are I think fifteen dollars each. So you can you can stay on your same tier and just purchase more of these. At the time of writing, uh, what you have is you know basically twenty five dollars per user per month for Tall, uh, fifty dollars for Grande, and in Grande you get a CRM plugin, advanced CRM integration, and in the Inventi includes two additional email accounts for each user. Uh, so basically, you can subscribe to Tall and purchase two uh, additional email add-ons, um, and that that would work out more cost-effective than one um, than one Venti subscription. Custom reports here as well. So I've been on the uh, I've been on the Tall plan for about four or five months at this point, and uh, I've had good success and unquestionably got a positive return on investment from using Plenty. Uh, there's more detail here about the features if you want to see it. Um, now that's basically really, that is really it in terms of billing. Uh, you can also create a team and these are, these will link additional Clenty users to your, uh, to your accounts. Now you can also do a delete scrubbing your data, which is always a nice thing to be able to do. Um, this is configuring your time zone. You can create user custom fields and we'll see how those interact uh, with this, this is one of the areas where I say it's a little bit buggy in terms of it's not quite clear. You can create these here, or if you create a new template with custom fields, uh, you it'll sometimes it'll automatically pick them up. So this is one of the features that um, you know is a little bit murky. Uh, so I generally don't create these here, but they do appear once you add them, and we'll see that in a bit. Um, and you can sign up for summary emails. So let's just skip through all these uh, all these features. Now you also have a prospect. Um, this is one very useful tool in Clenty, the domain blacklister. So if you absolutely, if there are certain domains or people you do not want to contact, uh, you know, then this will, this will allow you to do it. So let's say, for example, you uh, are currently working at Google and this is a very far-fetched scenario, um, but you are, uh, you know, you don't want to accidentally somehow, if you're doing an import of a um, email list and you don't want even if there is a Google link uh, and you do not want to send to Google, this blacklist will override. Now you can configure in the cadences the ability to automate to manually approve each sending list. This will override everything. So no matter what you do, um, I have in this, I have a couple of friends have startups and uh, when I tried this out with a, with a few startups uh, from a list, I just added, I added all the ones I could think of in here just to make sure, uh, just to make sure that I, now I'm not gonna add my own domains uh, because for the for seeing how this works, I want to actually use them as demonstrations. But that I would advise using that blacklist. Just put in anyone you really, really do not want to under any circumstance see your email activity. Now, basically, the core of the core of Clenty, it's it's fair to say, is um, the cadences. So basically, cadences. I'm just gonna the easiest way to demonstrate how Clenty works and how everything works really in this tool is to just uh, set up a cadence. So basically, um, this is the first step is I'm gonna be creating a subject line. So I'm gonna say like, for example, uh, um, and I'm just gonna do this as a test by sending to, uh, to my Gmail demo account, Daniel Rosso demo at gmail.com. So I'm just gonna say, uh, let's say I pitch, uh, I, I'm big into Indian cooking. So looking for curry this weekend. And let's just do the whole, uh, the whole shebang. So two, two curly brackets is on either end is how you create placeholders. Now you can choose from 
one of the de one of the default placeholders or create your own, your own ones. Um, I you know you can use these in your own databases if you want, or you can use your own ones if you want custom fields. I'm just gonna use my own ones. Um, I'm gonna say looking for a curry this weekend. Um, you know what? Let's keep let's keep with it. First name. First name. Now what I'm gonna do as I'm building out this uh, this uh, cadence is I'm gonna open up my spreadsheet tool, which is in the wonderful world of Linux, we use LibreOffice Calc. Um, so I'm gonna create um, a little database for this, and we're gonna need first name as one of the fields. We're gonna need for sure email. Uh, we're going to need, let's just make it very, very simple, three custom fields, city. Um, and let's just go like this. First name is Daniel, and we're gonna send it to my uh, test Gmail account. We're gonna, that is Daniel Rose demo at Gmail. City is gonna be Jerusalem, and uh, uh, just let's create another one called curry type. And again, this is a totally frivolous example, and let's call it chicken. So the, we have four custom fields here. Now what I'm gonna do is just save this as a CSV, and I'm just gonna do that quickly in my other screen. Um, save desktop type is going to be CSV and we're going to just say demo cadence okay so I've saved my uh, demo cadence.csv I'm going to use those fields in this hi first name hope you are keeping keeping well I'm doing my acclaimed curry delivery service again this weekend and I know how much you love uh, and then we have curry type curry type curry and this is just kind of how you really use it um, would you be interested in learning about our latest special offers uh, if so please click on this link and um, I hope you are keeping well. I forgot one field in city. Hope uh, that doesn't sound exactly right. I'm sorry, I'm being a bit pedantic here. Everything is going well in city. Um, okay, so that's gonna be my, my first email and sometimes it will throw this. You, you can either add this through the back end, as I said, or uh, you can use this now why I say it's kind of weird um, is that it will not really for example if we look at the default system placeholder sorry I'm correct I stand corrected it does have city now you can also you can also create a uh, fallback that means if you don't have uh, curry type in a certain field instead of simply skipping curry type for example and I know how much you love curry first name now that sentence would read fine even without chicken vegetarian beef whatever the case may be but if it wouldn't, you can create a fallback so that if there's nothing in the in the spreadsheet uh, under curry type, you can have it say, for example, you could just default to chicken. The fallback could be chicken. Um, but let's not uh, complicate things for the purpose of this demo. So that's basically it, add email. Now, that's one step. Um, you can do an A-B test as well. Uh, so you can send off two speculative curry emails and uh, the system will report back on which performed better. Or you can simply add a next another step in the cadence. So after two days, um, did you get my curry email? Now I'm not going to be able to show this um, in this video because I'm recording these at once. Um, but let's just uh, let's just create it anyway, so you can see how it works. And just I'll I'll try to do this one quickly. Dear first name. Um, now you can do this if the person responds um, the you can configure it so that the cadence uh, well the, the follow-up will not trigger so this is only for people so I'm if you're using these you're often writing just for people that didn't uh, that didn't risk that didn't open or uh, engage with the first email uh, so you can say you know I reached out to you a few days about my weekend curry delivery service sorry that we weren't able to connect Sorry to have so much corporate jargon here. Um, if you're still interested, uh, please check out my new website, currybydanielbydaniel.com. 
that'll Gmail will automatically parse that link. And let's just actually create uh, create a demo. One sec, a demo link here. Um, Curry by Daniel dot com. So just going to put a link into the first uh, first template too. Now um, that this is just a really simple two step cadence here. Um, there is by default the unsubscribe link is enabled. Um, so basically, you'll that will automatically appear beneath the body of the email, and you can create you can configure settings for each step of the cadence. So this will send at any time. This is all kind of self explanatory. You can create a window when it will send. And this is very good because you're running cadences uh, up to 700 emails. I'm just saying if you're doing a very, very big use of Clenty, you could have stuff running 700, one cadence in a, uh, you can actually do the mathematics if they're sending 30 seconds apart. Um, if they're sending 30 seconds apart, sorry, 30 multiplied by 700, uh, 21,000, 21,000 seconds in hours. Uh, hours and minutes, oh, let's just say roughly, five hours and 50 minutes. So that at that interval, um, you would it would take six hours for a cadence to, to run through until its daily limit. So you could configure three back-to-back uh, -back cadences if you toggled with the hours. That's just a little, uh, you could say a pro tip, but the, again, I don't, I don't recommend. I was just trying to think of the kind of maximum reaches of this, uh, of this system here. Um, you can also schedule days. So you can say, I don't want to, I don't want to send people on the weekends. I don't want to send email to people on the weekends. Um, and I've only got one from ID, but if you have multiple, uh, senders, as I said, you can have up to three with the add-ons on the account. You can specify which domain is going to send. Now, this is a cool feature. Uh, if you want to do this, you will approve emails before sending. Um, and you can toggle the unsubscribe link and you can also choose to apply this to each setting of the cadence. So if you don't want to go through the whole thing of these days and this time for each step of the way, you can click this button. Um, I'm going to keep the unsubscribe link to stay compliant. And that is basically it. So you can, you have folders and you can give it a name. So I'm going to call this curry prospecting emails. Time zone is Jerusalem. And here we go. Look at this stop cadence on reply and stop cadence on auto reply. So basically it has the intelligence to distinguish between automatic responding emails, you know, thank you, follow up and manual ones. Hi, Daniel, not interested. Um, stop cadence on reply. So that means if I respond to the first curry email saying, hi, Daniel, thanks for, the, thanks for that email, but not really interested in your curry, the person will not get a second, third, fourth email, however many steps you have in your cadence. Um, you can create an additional uh, a cadence throttle, which means that, remember we talked about the 700 emails per day for each email identity in Clenty. You can also have a specific one just for, uh, just for the cadence. So I'm just gonna say yes. And the second thing is we want to add prospects to the cadence. Um, now, there's a few ways. I talked about Google Sheets and the CRM and how you can use that cleverly uh, as an integration. So I'm not gonna demonstrate that. There are two ways I will demonstrate. One is you can do this um, the kind of manual way, and that's really that basically you can just add um, your people here, and just make sure make sure you'll need to add every uh, field in the cadence, or you'll get an error message, of course. Um, so we had uh, curry, we had sissy, and we had first name. So you would need to firstly uh, create fields for city. Sorry, cities here. Um, curry type would need to be in, in there in order that you can uh, put it in. So we said uh, chicken. So Daniel Rose will demo at gmail.com um, and then you can tag the prospect and add it to. And that basically, if I did this, Daniel Rose will demo, I'm not going to do it so that um, we can use this in the actual import because otherwise it'll skip sending to this Gmail address. Um, that would be how you would manually add one by one now that's obviously not a it's a it's a fine method for adding one one by one one email by one email but if you're adding a marketing list which is kind of how this thing is really set up to work with csv files it would not be pra practicable so let's come back to our um let's actually add one more um i'm gonna do daniel 2 and it's gonna say demos at uh, daniel i'm gonna say he's in tel aviv and he likes beef curry 
save that and I'm just going to, uh, yeah, that's saved. So that's now ready to go. So without further ado, I'm just gonna import this quickly. Uh, upload CSV. Now I've just pulled in my CSV file from my desktop and you can see it's gonna basically say, it's, this is the field mapping. So it's able to pick out some, This it's mapping is not brilliant to be perfectly honest, like first name to first name, email to email, city to city, curry type, for some reason, it can't map that to my custom field curry type. Now they're literally the exact same string, so that's a bug that Clenty should be working on, um, but it's not there at the moment. You can give this prospect list a name, I'm gonna call it Jerusalem Curry Outreach uh, 010520. And you can do tags as well. Um, the tags are useful when you, when you go through your prospect history, you can see, you can filter by cadence, by uh, prospect list and by tag. So if you have, you know, do some Curry Outreach and you could just put the date in as a tag, um, that would be another approach to that. But let's click on Start Import and it shouldn't take very long, it's a, one header row and uh, two entries and as you can see it's picked up two people who were not contacted and you can see them um, you can you can either directly start the thing or you can see what it's got so let's take a look at what it's picked up um, it's got it's picked up my two emails daniel rosal demo and uh, my test address it's gonna we're gonna send this out to step two this is a preview based on the first the second one actually how is everything going jerusalem I'm doing my claim curry delivery service again this weekend and I know how much you love chicken. This is the custom field here, chicken curry Daniel. Will you be inter would you be interested? Click on the link, right? So this is really nice. Uh, this is actually a new feature, relatively new, um, so that you don't need to, and there's nothing, nothing worse in email marketing and automated email marketing than screwing up a merge that if you botch a custom field, uh, you know, and it just looks really, really bad. So this is a nice way to just kind of de-risk that a bit. And this is the second email, it's shorter. Um, there's actually only just the first name in this. So I'm gonna click on start cadence and uh, your cadence is now live. Now what that means is that the, um, it is an operation and that these people, this is sending out currently. So um, I'm just gonna basically pick these up. Um, I'm just gonna pause the video for one second and just get into my, uh, give the cadence emails a second to send and get into my uh, demo Gmail account as well. Okay, so it's been about literally 20 seconds and as you can see, my curry prospecting email has just landed in my inbox. It's as expected come from dan demo at danielrosal.com. Um, it's not throwing up any, uh, it is throwing up, sorry, Gmail is getting this um, and uh, that it couldn't verify that it came from me. So uh, you can look into uh, adding DNS records. And actually that is something that Clenty needs to integrate. I just did a quick check. Um, you know, usually if you're adding DK, IM and SPF and these various DNS records, um, you, can, uh, you, can get, you can get past this. You can, you can uh, authenticate the cloud service. So um, I have had success connecting uh, Amazon SES email addresses uh, on SES as a demo um, and SendGrid and various other options. So um, they uh, did not throw up this, uh, this error. Um, what I actually use it for myself is I just use a G Suite account uh, uh, paid, uh, you know, hosted on Google. And uh, I also do not get this error when I send out emails. So uh, just ignore that for the moment. You can see basically, let's just look at the, look at the actual email that came through. Looking for a curry this weekend. First name came into the subject line, um, and uh, chicken curry is a merge field. Jerusalem is a merge field, um, and that's basically it. So that's sent. That's how it works. And in two days, um, if I you can see the unsubscribe link is appears here at the bottom. It's formatted in uh, gray text and light. And if the if the person clicks on this, now you can also do it if someone says. I never want to hear from you again. You can actually manually, you can go into that email and uh, click it on their behalf. So if I click confirm here, and uh, Clenty will not be able to send to that email address again and they'll be safely removed, but it does automatically uh, appear. And you know, for best practice in email marketing, your cold emails should be relevant, targeted, and ideally you, sh you should also say in the body something like uh, why, why you're contacting them. I got your email address from X. 
um, you signed up in my store for the curry emails uh, if you'd like to unsubscribe please pick the link at the bottom of the email something to that effect woodpecker actually have a good resource about this this is the woodpecker resource just about uh, GDPR FAQ um, asking how cold email and this uh, Q3 can I send cold emails to people under under GDPR uh, you know r remaining in compliance with GDPR is follow-up email a violation of GDPR uh, I'm just gonna actually run through this quickly because it's very very relevant and important to anyone doing cold emailing uh, as it says firstly you need to target your prospects very carefully you need to have a strong reason to claim that the company the person works for can benefit from what your company offers in the email uh, that will be legal basis to send someone an email without their previous consent to process our data. So that's very, very important. So that's, as I said, firstly, um, when I'm doing this in, when I'm using Clenty, I'm looking for uh, specific agencies, types of agencies who I might be interested in writing for. And I do spend quite a lot of time looking at their websites and uh, thinking what they do. Does that align with what I do? It's basically not that cold, really. Um, and then putting those emails in. So that's number one. Secondly, uh, in each of the email messages, you need to inform your cold e recipients what personal data you are processing for what purpose and how they can remove their data from your email list or change them. That's how you fulfill the information duty. So, um, uh, you know, I, I say in my one, this is, this is a one-time use list, but you can also click on the unsubscribe list to remove yourself, uh, typically. And my ones really are one-time uh, contacts to people. Uh, I don't do, the, the truth is that I don't do follow-ups. I'm not a fan of, uh, most I do one follow-up. I don't like these five or six uh, drip follow-up campaigns. I find them incredibly annoying when I get them personally. Um, thirdly, you should not process your cold email, email addresses, personal data for longer than is necessary. Uh, G GDPR does not specify any particular period of time. We advise moving from your list, the data or prospects who have not replied within 30 days from sending them your first message. That's how you abide by the data storage limitation principle while sending cold emails. Uh, in practice, that means the end of the spray and pray approach. Uh, so point three is very important that you should be deleting, uh, deleting the data on a cold emailing platform like Lenti. Uh, so if we go into prospects, I'll just show you how to do that. Uh, you can see I have now stored the two people, um, Daniel and Daniel2, have been stored in my system. You can double click, uh, click all and uh, delete and that'll change them. You can also apply more and this will be uh, the final thing that I will uh, demonstrate in this, um, in this plenty video um, before I move on to templates and then we'll call it, we'll call it a day. Uh, so basically, you can actually apply some stuff on the back end. You can add them to different lists. And more importantly than that, you can change uh, change the prospect status. So you can actually move them into do not contact list or unsubscribes uh, directly here. And you can do this in bulk. Imagine instead of two contacts here, there's 200 contacts. Um, you can also see exactly what stage every, everybody's at if they're, these two have not replied um to the uh to the email marketing campaign uh so if i go into this and i say um let's just see how this see how all this works that sounds awful i do not like curry at all please remove me from your list um now i gave this a connection to the i imap uh to the inbound email server so that's how this works it should be able to uh detect and let's just see in practice now this is coming from uh, Daniel this was Daniel and not Daniel 2 so the first test Daniel um, might take a little bit of time to process but we'll come back in at the end of the video and see if uh, it's detected that there was a reply it hasn't done so yet um, it might pull in periodically so let's now look at another thing you can do uh, is templates now remember in this one um, we had that kind of curry message and all that so you can create a template, uh, if I just do it like this, um, and you can give it a name, uh, you know, fo generic follow-ups, generic curry follow-ups. And what you can do is you can then use um, second round. You can use, uh, let's, call, let's call this breakup. Uh, that's a common one, breakup email. <coughs> you can then use this in, temp in your cadences. I'll show you how to do this. Um, first name, uh, I've been, trying to convince you about how wonderful my curry is. 
I don't want to keep bugging you, so if you do not reply to this email, email, uh, I will take it that you are no, ah, sorry, are no longer interested. Thanks anyway, Daniel. Okay. Um, now what I've done here is I'm, I've created a, it's in the default category, I'm just gonna say generic breakup email. And uh, that's now a template in my system. What I can do now is go back into my cadences, my curry prospecting email cadence. Uh, by the way, you can change the name. Another, another cool thing here is it shows 50% uh, it shows complete. So it's a two stage, uh, it's a two stage cadence. There are two people in the cadences, in the cadence. Two people have received stage one, therefore the cadence is at 50% completion. Uh, so you can see how many people. Now, one cool thing to point out is that you can go through this upload process as many times as you like. You can just use the cadence for, there's no limit, however long you have a, a Clenty subscription, you can keep running and just keep feeding in CSV files or manual prospects in through the system. Um, but if you edit it, it, it you, you will have the choice of, um, of uh, updating people in the cadence or not. So let's just add one more step and I'm just gonna demonstrate how we can, um, so this is creating another step in the cadence. If I click on insert template, uh, I will be able to pull in my break of email and insert that in. Now that's in the cadence and you can see if you ever lose your signature, uh, you can just click like this and uh, pull your signature back in. You can also, by the way, edit the HTML uh, source code for these emails. So if you if you have an HTML email template that includes a background and you want to include your message your message within the body of that template, you could copy and paste, drop in your nicely formatted HTML template uh, into this code editor here, um, and then go back to visual editing mode and put in your your message. Um, so this is the template and you can just add or detract from your template. You could just use the template or you can play around with it. Um, and you know, so I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more and we're on a major drive to sign up new customers in uh, City. So I just added like one more field. Now, when I publish that, I have the option to apply this to the two people in my cadence or not. Now, uh, the one thing I would say is that uh, this will be should be pretty much instantaneous. If you have a big cadence with uh, 200 people in the cadence, then uh, this is where I have uh, reason to believe that the system can be buggy. When you apply big operations, it can freeze for a little bit uh, or kind of choke the system. So you have to be careful there. So that's basically uh, the cadence creation. The final thing, as I said, let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, you can go into the inbox here. No replies detected uh, from your email account, uh, so that's not correct. You can call up reports uh, for a specific cadence and see uh, if we go into, for example, the curry prospecting emails, uh, the, there's two people, um, metrics for the steps, uh, A-B test reports can be included here. We didn't configure an A-B test, but you could see A and B uh, and compare yourself and you can download these guys as well. Uh, it's, it puts out its data in CSV, comma-separated comma value format. And one more thing to point out is the import history. So uh, we have run one CSV import so far, but if you have a long list of them, you can see exactly uh, when, when stuff was imported which email addresses were imported. So you can see here we have, uh, we can look into that import and see the addresses that were picked up. If we try to do that again, let's go back to our cadence and uh, let us uh, just, um, quickly, uh, let's run the same contacts in again and you'll see what'll happen. So if you try to uh, put back in uh, duplicate contacts that have already been um, add it, you can see what'll happen. It'll detect that, that they're already in the cadence. Uh, it'll actually detect if you add them to a different cadence that they're already in the, uh, in plenty. So you can see zero prospects selected for cadence curry prospecting emails. Um, so it, it knew that those two 
email addresses and therefore they have not been added. So it has a lot of nice functionalities to prevent accidental uh, duplicate emails, whether that's accidental duplicate contact. Again, it's got the blacklist in order to prevent uh, sending to, uh, you know, sending to people that you really don't want to. So the final, final, final thing, and you can have a look at your sent items and actually go into individual messages. Uh, you can see this was Daniel's two, Daniel two emails, Daniel two's email, which was Tel Aviv as the mer first merge file, um, beef curry as the second merge. Uh, so you have really a complete record of your, uh, of your outbound contact. And indeed, uh, you can actually take an export of the emails, um, if, and put that in again into a CSV if required for some sort of, uh, data compliance standpoint or something, something of that nature. Um, final, final thing to show is the prospect management area. Uh, this is where you can take a look at uh, your prospects. You can also, for example, see if I highlight Daniel two and click stop cadence, uh, you can pull individual uh, people uh, out or into cadences. Um, and I'm just gonna go back into cadences now and uh, create prospecting emails. And it's now actually showing a 60, 66% complete because that action has changed, creating the third email. There's three, so obviously three divided by uh, uh, is 33 and 33 is 66. So that's basically how Clenty works. Uh, I would say in summary that it's a very, very effective program for cold automated uh, email marketing, email automation, cold email, and whatever you want to call it. Not 100% perfect. There are a few bugs here and there. Uh, the team is working pretty quickly and even since uh, you know a few weeks since I've been actually in site plenty uh, I can see there's been more improvements um, just to reiterate what the pricing is 25 bucks a month on this basic plan which gets you one sending identity um, and on that sending identity you can uh, you can send up to 700 emails per day you can add two more uh, email IDs per account which each add 700 more so that's a cumulative total of 2100 outbound emails um, it can work with any SMTP server from what I've seen ranging from stuff like uh, SES to any SMTP server you know a little shared hosting provider uh, or you know G Suite or whatever the case may be um, and that's basically it you can either use it with your CRM or you can go for um, you can go for, uh, you, you know, just adding stuff in. It's basically oriented around the CSV. That's kind of the main import method, um, which you can use. So any questions about Clenty, I'm not a, I wouldn't consider myself a Clenty expert, uh, or CRMs or technology in general, especially sales, marketing tech, uh, I'd be happy to just get in touch or just to get in touch. Uh, this is my personal website danielrosal.co.il. I hope this uh, review and run through of what Clenty uh, email automation slash sales engagement platform can do has been helpful. And I look forward to creating some more video content soon.